Greetings Wombats. Well, I'm here to show you a little trick, a little trick for tracing images. Maybe you're doing a report about leopards and you want to draw a nice picture of a leopard without all this text and everything around it. Well, I can show you a way to trace it onto a new piece of paper. And you might say, well, I know how to trace. I use tracing paper. Well, maybe you want to put it on cardstock or watercolor paper, a thick paper that's hard to see through. Um, and maybe you don't have a light table. They have light up tables where you can put it on there or you can even hold it up to the window. But guess what? This clipping, this newsprint, this magazine where you found your image has all this junk on the back that if you try to trace it, it's just going to get in your way and you can't tell your leopard spots. All right, so I've got a quick little trick on doing that. And uh, we're actually going to look at my file here of basic things, old calendars, pictures that uh, I've kept over the years that look like they would make good drawings for the kids. Um, so yeah, let's go over ahead and take a look at my file here. All right, actually, we're going to take a look at the file a little bit later because I'm going to get right to the method because that's what you want to see anyway. So this is what I've selected. This picture of a dolphin here. It's, it's got nice clean lines and I want to put it into my sketchbook here. Move that to the side. All right, so I saw this technique on a YouTube video about learning to watercolor. There's this teacher called Stan Miller, and he has an awesome channel if you want to learn about uh, watercolor. He has this method for transferring an image to another piece of paper if you can't trace it for whatever reason. The first step is to mark, well, first step is to decide where on the page. I should have done that, actually. Let's decide where on the page I want my dolphin. We're ignoring all this stuff. This isn't here. It's not going to be there. So I want to center my dolphin nicely on the page. So it's going to be about there. All right. So ignore that. Move it up some. So here are my marks. I'm going to mark the corners of where this page is. Oops. Could have done a little better with that. Blue, blue, blue. Registration marks, you might say. And uh, it doesn't have to be the whole page. If it's bigger than the page you're trying to put it on, then you might have to cut your picture. If it's just torn out of a magazine and you don't care about it, all this other stuff, then that's fine. Just cut it to the approximate size and then mark two of the corners. So what we're gonna be do doing is moving this and putting it back. We're gonna keep doing this over and over. We're gonna move it and put it back. So we need to put it back in the same spot. That's why we've marked the corners to help line it up. If I was left-handed, I would mark these two corners because I'd be using my right hand to move it out, put it back, move it out, put it back. Makes sense. So if you're a lefty, mark these two corners. If you're a righty, mark these two corners because your other non-drawing hand is going to be moving this picture. So it's a pretty simple technique. I wish I'd thought of it by myself, but I didn't. But once I learned it, I decided I should pass it on to you guys because this could be really useful. All right, so what we're going to do is just hover our pencil over a point on the picture and then move the picture, drop the pencil down, make a little mark. Then put this back where it was. Now we're going to make another mark. How about where the beak kind of meets the head, like that. Boop. All right, and we're going to pick out these important parts on the drawing and we're going to just lay in a little bit of a framework that we can connect. So you might be tempted to do this. What I've started doing is making dots. Okay, is this a great dot to dot? Well, not really. I mean, it doesn't really describe the shape as well as drawing lines. So dots are good for certain points, but you can get a lot more information by doing a line. So do a little ghost sketch on top and then move this, boom. Do a line. Let's see. Oh, this part of the flipper goes kind of straight down. You're going to end up getting a lot more out of it. Figure out kind of the little straight shots and the angles. Even if you make it a bunch of straight lines, you can then curve them later. But this describes your shape better than just some points floating in space. So as you see, I'm zoning in on a place, and I'm moving 
the picture out of the way and keeping my right hand, keeping the position hovering in the air and just dropping it down on the paper as soon as the picture leaves. And we just keep doing this process. And once we have a bunch of guides in there, we can draw it in. All right, so let me give me a little more on the head, and I'll be able to do some drawing. Let's go up here and get the very top and back like that. All right, so I've gotten these guides, and based on that, I can go ahead and draw my dolphin. I can still keep this nearby just to keep me reminded of just how roundy things are or aren't. And there's the beak, the mouth, the bottlenose. Not sure what you call it on a dolphin. Where the fish go. There we go. We're on our way. And wait, there's some details on the interior too. We're not just tracing the outline. This is good for telling us where that mouth starts and stops what angles it goes at. You can see it kind of goes up, downish, and then down some more, and then up again. So figure out the zones where it changes directions, and that will inform. Wait a minute, I'm not lined up there well. Boop. That will inform how you draw that in. I know how far it should go and what angles it should be at. How about his eye? Right yonder. There we go. And you can fix that up. And of course, this is just an indication if you want to kind of cartoonify your drawing or add some details, put a hat on them, something like that, you can do that. Let's pick out that blowhole. It's right around there. Nope, looks like my head's a little flatter than this guy, but that's all right. All right, so now I'm just gonna to continue to work. I'm gonna work my way around the dolphin and draw it in. All right, let's go into fast mode. Dolphin successfully transferred from magazine onto sketchbook. So now we can color this, we can add to it, we can draw the sea floor, we can draw some surroundings around it. So there you go. Colored pencil, whatever. I have another one that I happen to do uh, for watercolor. I wanted to try some watercolor and I erased all the pencil afterwards, so it looks a little a little choppy on the outsides, but this is also rough paper, so you get kind of that feel. So there you go. So what makes a good picture to transfer? Because not all pictures are equal. I mean, it's obviously a picture of a real thing, but does it make it good to trace? The sea animals are great because they have a nice clean line around them. Furry animals are a little trickier, but not impossible. Let's look at some other pictures in here. That's a pretty good one. You don't see much of the body of this tiger, but if you just wanted the head, you could trace that, put little indications. There's a lot more to trace with the patterns and everything, but you can always just get yourself started with the proportions, like where's the nose compared to the eyes, and then lay that down and then just have fun coloring it in and putting the markings wherever you want to put them. There's a hammerhead shark. That's a pretty good candidate. What do we got? Oh, a hamster. That's cute. That would be a great thing to do with colored pencils. You can even use your colored pencil to directly mark down on the page. Just move it, mark, move it, put your mark, figure out where your mark is. There you go. Is this a good image? It's definitely a cool close-up picture of a lion, but the truth is we, we only see part of one ear. We don't really see the form 
of the whole head. If you wanted to draw a lion and communicate that to someone that it's a lion, uh, you really need to see more of the shape. This is a good color reference. Definitely if you had another picture of a lion and you wanted to see exactly you know, what the coloration could look like, this is a great reference for that. Or if you're doing an extreme close-up painting, you could do a picture like that. But uh, generally, something like this would be better. As you see the whole dog, it's a bit, a bit soft focus right here, but you could fake that in. You know generally where it is. Um, so yeah, you could have something same size, same dog, but get rid of this and color it or paint it yourself. Put it on a canvas, put it on watercolor paper. Uh, there's a sea creature, that one's pretty cool. Water. How about this? This, is, this would still work. You could ignore the fence and just put the markings in, and that way you could free this tiger from behind that fence. You can do a drawing of that tiger's face without that chain link in the way. There's a pretty good shot of a horse. You can see all the legs. Sometimes there's pictures like, I don't know, this coyote. It's pretty good of the head, but not so much of the body because it's all kind of on top of itself. Chimpanzee, that would be good. Just for the portrait. Oh, bunny. So yeah, these things would be pretty good. Oh, a howling coyote. You could ignore all the rest and ignore some of these leaves that are in front of him. Him or her, not sure. It's pretty good for a coyote's face, not for the body. We can't really see the legs. Two cans, these are nice and crisp. This would work. Oh, my picture got stuck here. I put some tape there to try and keep me from putting my head over the table. What about this? That's pretty funny. That would make a great picture, but it's Kind of hard. I don't know how that would work as far as tracing goes because of all this snow in the way. You could even, you could draw it and maybe color it in with colored pencil or something and then glue some snow on top of it. It would make a pretty funny picture. So there you go. So those are, those are some ideas, things you may have around the house. And also, additionally, you might have like an old family photograph Something like this, an 8x10 or something like that. It would work perfectly for an old photo. Here's my Uncle Harrison. Just kidding. But yeah, same deal. Mark the size. This would be good if you have like an uh, old timey picture of your grandparents or something. You want to make a gift for your parents or for them. And you want to do a pastel or you want to do a you know, colored pencil or watercolor. I'm going to put this on watercolor paper myself. But I think that'll be a separate video. Let's make a separate video about Uncle Harry here. Sound good? All right. Enjoy.